The U.S. Nuclear Energy Regulator has decided to suspend licensing for shipments of radioactive materials and deuterium to China General Nuclear, or CGN, China's largest nuclear power company. Why? On October 1st, the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or NRC, issued an order on Federal Register. It suspends the General License Authority under NRC regulations to export radioactive material in deuterium to China General Nuclear CGN, CGN subsidiaries or related entities. Deuterium is used in heavy water fissions reactors in nuclear power plants and a critical element in the production of hydrogen bombs. The order mentioned that the White House confirmed that the suspension is necessary to further the national security interests of the United States and to enhance the United States' common defense and security consistent with the Atomic Energy Act of 1954. It indicates the White House is concerned with the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP's, aggressive development of nuclear weapons. The CCP often obtains military secrets and parts in the name of civilian use. China General Nuclear, or CGN, is an organization that serves such a purpose. In August 2019, the Trump administration blacklisted CGN and its related entities for attempting to obtain advanced U.S. technology and materials that could be used for military purposes. Previously in 2016, the U.S. government indicated CGN and a U.S. citizen of Taiwanese descent and his company for conspiring to illegally engage and participate in the development and production of special nuclear materials in China. On August 12th, Admiral Charles A. Richard, head of U.S. Strategic Command, said at the Space and Missile Defense Symposium that the CCP is developing a new generation of nuclear power plants that could produce large amounts of plutonium that could be used to make nuclear weapons. He warned that China is boosting all areas of its missile force, including both quantity and quality of its strategic delivery systems, that within 10 years it would double its nuclear capability. Ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing a strategic breakout by China. i say that again. We are witnessing a strategic breakout by China. Their explosive growth and modernization of its nuclear and conventional forces can only be what I describe as breathtaking. And frankly, that word breathtaking may not be enough. A Pentagon report to Congress in 2020 also pointed out that China's nuclear warheads, currently numbering about 200, would at least double within 10 years. In January 2021, on the eve of his departure from office, then Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, wrote a joint opinion piece with the Presidential Envoy for Arms Control entitled Why China's Nuclear Buildup Should Worry the West, in which he said, if current trends hold, China will at least double its total nuclear arsenal in the next decade. Beijing's unfettered nuclear development is a central part of the CCP's threat. Perhaps the UK is also starting to feel worried. The Guardian revealed on September 25th that the UK is close to a deal that, if reached, would eliminate CGN's involvement in the construction of new nuclear power plants in the UK. The report said that the British government could announce the plan as early as next month before the COP26 climate summit to acquire a stake in the Sizewell C nuclear power plant project along with France's EDF the power giant backed by the French government. That would result in CGN, which currently holds a 20% stake in Sizewell C, pulling out of the project. In response to the report, a UK government spokesperson said, nuclear power will play a key role as we work to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels and mitigate the impact of global gas price volatility. CGN currently remains a shareholder in Sizewell C until the government makes a final investment decision. Negotiations are still ongoing and no final decision has been made. 
In 2020, the UK government decided to ban Huawei from building its 5G network and to scrutinize CGN's involvement in UK civil nuclear projects. A former nuclear physicist at China's Ministry of Nuclear Industry told overseas Chinese media that the CCP has learned and stolen a lot of advanced technology, including nuclear technology from democratic countries such as the US, France, and the UK in these past 20 to 30 years. The CCP's nuclear capability has surpassed that of Russia and North Korea, and the nuclear threat it poses has surpassed that of Russia and North Korea as well. She said it would be a very frightening prospect for the CCP to double its nuclear weapons. Indeed, in April 2021, the Chinese media reported with great fanfare that three major warships of different types had been inducted into the Chinese Navy at the same time. This is a rare occurrence in the history of the world's naval forces and shows the magnitude of the CCP's military expansion. Among them is the latest strategic nuclear-powered submarine, Long March 18, which is said to be capable of being equipped with JL-3 submarine-launched missiles with a range of more than 10,000 kilometers. It can cover targets in the mainland U.S. without leaving the first island chain, which is interpreted by Chinese military experts as a qualitative leap in sea-based nuclear power. On August 17, China National Nuclear Corporation, CNNC, the mainstay of the CCP's nuclear construction released an operating brief showing that as of July 2021, CNNC had signed close to 73 billion renminbi or over 11 billion US dollars in new contracts, up 20.6% year on year. New contracts for military projects reached over 17 billion renminbi, up 391.4% year on year. The South China Morning Post, an English-language newspaper in Hong Kong, quoted observers as saying on August 20th that the sharp increase in military orders indicates Beijing's increased efforts to improve its military nuclear capabilities. The newspaper also disclosed that the CCP's military engineering expenditures have increased significantly, with a year-on-year -year increase of 302.2% in June 2021 and a year-on-year -year increase of 332.4% in May, it's safe to say that China's nuclear expansion is an open secret. Contrary to the international trend of abandoning nuclear power, Beijing has identified the next 15 years as an essential opportunity for nuclear development. In March 2021, the government's work report proposed the active and orderly development of nuclear power for the first time. It plans that by 2035, China's nuclear electricity generation will account for about 10% of the nation's total electricity production. Behind this blueprint for nuclear power lies the CCP's nuclear ambitions. Because the nuclear industry is extremely sensitive, the same nuclear reactors used to generate electricity can also be used to extract weapons-grade metal plutonium. The CCP has successfully exploited the U.S.-China civil nuclear cooperation to apply U.S. civil nuclear technology to a new generation of submarines, aircraft carriers, and floating nuclear power plants. It has improved its nuclear capabilities in science and technology to provide strong support for its military nuclear expansion. For example, the U.S.-China Agreement for Cooperation Concerning Peaceful Uses of Nuclear Energy was signed in 1985 and expired in 2015. It was not until October 2018 when the Trump administration released the U.S. policy framework on civil nuclear cooperation with China that exports of nuclear technology to China became significantly tightened. In addition, in 2013, the CCP first proposed a going global strategy for nuclear power. It was elevated to a national strategy and promoted together with the Belt and Road Initiative. On March 18, 2021, China's nuclear power brand, Hualong One, was connected to the grid for the first time overseas. Unlike other energy investment projects, nuclear power plant construction is a massive investment with a long lead time, allowing the CCP to establish a close relationship with the recipient country for decades. U.S. nuclear experts say the longer the Communist Party's nuclear tentacles extend, the more voice it will have in global nuclear governance.
In recent years, the CCP's expansion of nuclear weapons has become less covert, a move that runs counter to a decades-old nuclear strategy based on minimal deterrence. So why is the CCP doing this? In May and July of this year, the editor-in-chief of the Global Times and official Chinese media posted several times on China's social media platform, Weibo, that the CCP needed to expand its nuclear warheads to the level of 1,000 in a relatively short period of time and that it must be prepared for a high-intensity showdown between China and the U.S. should it occur. A professor from the People's University of China echoed him, saying that the relations between China and the U.S. have reached a tipping point and that it's necessary for the CCP to increase its nuclear weapons to a four-digit number. Some media commentators believe that the U.S. is renewing its nuclear arsenal, which the CCP may perceive as a rare window of opportunity. Early in the Obama administration, a proposal was made to update the nuclear arsenal. The U.S. plans to simultaneously build new nuclear ballistic missile submarines, new long-range nuclear warhead-capable bombers, a new generation of air-launched nuclear cruise missiles, and a new nuclear command and communication system, as well as replace nuclear warheads. Updating the nuclear arsenal is costly, with an estimated total cost of more than 1.2 trillion U.S. dollars. In terms of U.S. national strength, the national debt in 2020 exceeded 28 trillion US dollars, and the US GDP in 2020 was only 20.955 trillion dollars. The call to reduce military spending is high. Moreover, the bipartisan political differences in cyclical elections pose a challenge for policy continuity. It remains a question whether the renewal of the nuclear arsenal will be completed as scheduled. Based on this, the CCP may judge that before the completion of the nuclear arsenal update, the United States' nuclear warfare will be difficult to compare with before, and this provides a window of opportunity for Beijing to develop nuclear weapons for at least 10 years. The current gap between U.S. and Chinese nuclear weapons is still significant. It's almost impossible for the CCP to catch up in the short term. However, the CCP's red mindset is different from that of Western countries. The recent series of provocative acts done by the CCP in the Taiwan Strait, the Communist Party's rapid development of nuclear weapons not only threatens the peace and stability of the world, but in reality, the Chinese are seriously compromised as well. What is more frightening to the Chinese is the fusion of a civil and military nuclear use. As we mentioned earlier, nuclear power plants are civilian in appearance, but in reality, they serve many military functions such as producing the plutonium needed for nuclear bombs, especially for small warheads. Nuclear power plants in mainland China are built in economically developed and densely populated areas, leading to serious safety concerns about site selection, operation management, etc. Within the overall corrupted system of the CCP, the management of nuclear power stations is a grave concern. In August 2009, the general manager of China National Nuclear Corporation, CNNC, who was dubbed as the CCP's nuclear chief, was sentenced to life imprisonment for corruption. He was accused of taking 260 million renminbi in bribes, and his main method of amassing wealth was cheating on construction bids for nuclear power plants. On October 25, 2016, China's National Nuclear Safety Administration published a bulletin titled Circular on recent operational incidents resulting from personnel actions at nuclear power plants on its official website. It compiled and analyzed a total of 16 incidents at nuclear power stations. 
These incidents are either not reported or underreported, which shows that nuclear power plant operations in China are not optimistic. In June 2021, the safety of the Taishan nuclear power plant in Guangdong was called into question. At first, the nuclear plant stressed everything being normal, but eventually announced a shutdown for maintenance on July 30th. In November 2016, according to several Hong Kong media, a leak occurred at the Guangdong Daya Bay nuclear power plant, which supplies electricity to Hong Kong. But the CCP completely blocked the news. The same plant has had several leaks, but most of them have been covered up by the CCP. Hush money of upwards of 1 billion renminbi per year has been paid to residents since 2010. Despite claims by senior CCP officials that China's nuclear power plants are sited far from geological fracture zones, in reality, almost all of China's operating and under construction nuclear power plants are located along the east coast. Geographically, this region happens to be close to the Pacific Rim seismic belt. In addition to these two major safety issues, the Chinese people have to bear the cost of nuclear waste. The Chinese media, Southern Weekend, reported in June 2014 that the existing nuclear waste disposal and treatment facilities were grossly inadequate compared to the number of nuclear power plants in China. The selection of sites for new facilities has been stalled by reluctance from local governments and a lack of clarity about operational ownership. In other words, the Chinese government strongly recommends nuclear power development, but cannot deal with spent fuel and nuclear waste disposal properly. Spent fuel is nuclear fuel that has been irradiated in a nuclear reactor and is so low in uranium that it can no longer sustain a nuclear reaction. Spent fuel still contains a large amount of usable material, which is subsequently recycled and eventually becomes nuclear waste. Nuclear waste possesses extremely high levels of radioactivity and has a half-life of thousands, tens, or even hundreds of thousands of years. That's to say, nuclear waste can still harm humans in the environment even after hundreds of thousands of years. No country has been able to find a way to safely and permanently dispose of highly radioactive nuclear waste. Except for deep geological disposal, where it's kept deep underground in special warehouses for permanent storage. However, in the eyes of the CCP, none of these is likely a significant problem. They are worried about whether there will be increasing deterrence from the West on the path to nuclear development.